So a lot has happened in the last two days, huh? A lot of very interesting hardware releases and announcements. Across the pond, Daddy Donald has lost the US elections, but they will be specifically focusing on a very specific question specifically, and that is, is the RTX 3090 still worth it ever since AMD announced the RX 6900 XT? The RX 6900 XT promises to beat, maybe even surpass, the RTX 3090 at $400 less, which sounds like it should be a no-brainer. but. Clearly there has to be some compromises somewhere, right? And true, at least from what we know so far, there's still quite a few advantages that the RTX 3090 have, and still a few reasons you could potentially want to buy it instead of an RX 6900 XT, even if it costs $400 more. So let's go over exactly what these two cards have on offer and which one you should buy, at least from what we know so far. The first advantage the 3090 still has is, of course, the memory, with the 3090 having 24 gigs of GDDR6X and the 6900XT having 16 gigabytes of GDDR6. Now, before that difference in memory speed mattered way more, but thanks to AMD's Infinity Cache, which is present in these new Radeon 6000 graphics cards, it doesn't make as much of a difference as you'd originally think. But the capacity does make a difference. 16 gigabytes, no questions asked, is enough for most people. For many professionals and also for people who game at high resolutions like 4K, 16 gigabytes is more than enough. Maybe even for 8K, that's enough, but there are people out there who could use even more than 16. In fact, if those people didn't exist, why would it even include so much VRAM in a graphics card? And the 3090 is perfect for people who own cards like the Titan RTX last gen, which also had 24 gigs. And 24 gigabytes will be plenty for professionals, at least unless you're doing something absolutely ridiculous that requires like 40 gigs or plus, which is seen on quad rows. And if you are interested in AK gaming, and that's probably around 0.1% of you watching this video, then 24 gigabytes is going to give you plenty of headroom for that as well. Because remember, when you game at high resolutions, free RAM usually becomes the bottleneck. However, one thing to remember is that even though I've been comparing the 3090 to a Titan, it is not a Titan, not just in name, but also it lacks a lot of Titan specific drive optimizations that make those cards so good for heavy duty workloads. So do keep in mind that the 3090 doesn't have them, but neither does the 6900 XT. So, and there are no Ampere based Titan cards out yet at least yet. Next thing is something especially useful for fellow content creators like myself, and that is the NVENC encoder and then the whole NVIDIA suite of tools. NVENC is absolutely amazing and it's so 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 painful to see that AMD still has no real response to that because if they did, ooh, the sales of Radeon cards would skyrocket if they simply had a good NVENC encoder competitor. However, that's not the only ace up NVIDIA's sleeve, because the whole suite of tools that they've been developing for the past few years has been really paying off. And with this new generation especially, they added some super interesting and exciting stuff, especially NVIDIA Broadcast, which allows you to do stuff like mess with your background, even without a green screen, allows you to use RTX Voice to remove background noise from your microphone feed, tons of super super fun stuff in that stuff like omnibus machinima which makes it easy to create like 3d scenes and animations and stuff not to mention stuff like shadow play in video highlights and so probably other ones are missing as well there is a lot of that stuff oh and also nvidia reflex that's another one i almost forgot which should decrease your latency in games and in fact i did a whole video talking about that so i recommend you check it out as well sadly AMD doesn't have a response to that whole set of tools just yet, so if you are interested in any of those, then an RTX 3090 could still be for you. Third reason is the driver situation. Yes, I know it's very cliche to make fun of AMD for the drivers, but they're still not as optimized as NVIDIA drivers, and they can still be a bit of a pain. Could they change at all with Radeon RX 6000? Probably, and if they do, then really good for them, making this entire point kind of mute. But until then, we don't know. So that's another thing to look out for, that the drivers could really be, you know, less optimized on Radeon compared to 
on NVIDIA cards. And of course, there's also the issue of stock. We don't know how much stock AMD will have when these cards go live. If we will have shortages like with the RTX 3000 cards, we just don't know. We just have to wait and see. So I would say do not disregard the RTX 3090 just yet, even if it costs $400 or more. Now this RX 1900 XT is looking up to be an absolutely amazing card, but it still lacks some features. So you just have to make up your mind and see if all these extra features of the RTX 3090 make it worth that $400 price difference. If they do, go with a 3090. If they don't, go with an RX 1600 XT. Both are fantastic cards, at least from what we know so far. Technically, the 1600 XT isn't out yet, but they're both super exciting products that really, really push the envelope, and I'm really excited to see what the future holds for them. So definitely let me know which card you're planning on buying, if you're planning to buy either of them, or maybe you just, I don't know, gonna be waiting for a RTX 3060 or whatever. Maybe just let me know all of that down below. And hey, while you're here, maybe check out my Patreon, it's gonna be down in the video description below, because even one dollar month is a long way, and also allows me to make way better videos on some videos on way more interesting topics. I also like to thank my patrons Gavin Burns and LKB, thank you so so much. Then there's also a link to my Discord if you want to talk to me about this or whatever else really. Check out my Discord, it's a great place. And then there's also Amazon links if you want to buy anything with Amazon, you don't pay anything extra, we get some money, it's a win. Win, I'll have a link to some nice B550 boards because, well, let's be honest, your next PC will most likely use a Ryzen 5000 CPU. And that's about it, so I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, remember to subscribe, like, whatever, and I'll see you all in what I like next. Goodbye, everyone. Goodbye.